Well, let's go. We're in the book of James. We're in the book of James. Thanks for coming out this afternoon. Let's go. Let's go. Let's have some fun with this and let's learn. Yes. Father, I thank you that we're attentive right now to what you have to say. I listen for your Holy Spirit. Give us understanding, understanding, and help us to live this now, and then help us to share this with others that they may live it. Thank you that you love us so much. Now teach us how to love you. And in the book of James, the Lord's brother, help us to zero in on exactly what you're saying to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's go. We're in James chapter 1, and I want to start from verse 13. I know a, a couple of weeks ago, I had uh, the fishing pole, and I said, every man is drawn away of his own lust, correct? Yes. Everybody remember that? Yes. All right. So today's title in the book of James is The Anatomy of Sin. The Anatomy of Sin. Once you understand how sin works, and more importantly, what sin is attempting to do, and we're going to see it right here in the Bible, we're going to let the Bible tell us what it is, and I want you to gather in together and allow everything that you're hearing to have an impact on you, inside of you, that you and I begin to make changes as a result of what we hear today. We've read these scriptures before, and I've read them. I even showed you that every person is drawn away. But let's start right now in verse number 12. Blessed is the man that endure temptation for when he is tried. And by the way, every time you see man, this is male and female, this is mankind. Everybody got it? So look what this says, blessed. So let's, let's break down that word, blessed. What do y'all think that word means? Somebody say happy and to be envied. And uh, let's see, I don't think I missed it. I think I, uh, that's an F. <laughs> Let me do that better. Oh, boy. All right. So, I just want to put the word here, fully. F-U-L-L-Y. S, satisfied. S-A-T-I-S. F-I-E-D. Satisfied. F-I-E-D, right? Fully what? Satisfied. Who wants a fully satisfied life? Amen. Let's take a moment and think about that for a second. Do you? Do you really want a fully satisfied life? There are a lot of people that obey the word and live a holy life, but not fully satisfied. Satan's job is to attempt to tempt us in areas where we're not fully satisfied. Here's the other thing. I want to bring up some words, and I want you to be thinking about this. Please tune in. Everybody that's here, please listen. Just take a moment. We're not going to be long. I need you to understand what's happening in our society. Once you understand what's happening as a church, we're better able to come together, mobilize, and begin to have influence in the places where we are. We're in what's called a postmodern era. Postmodern era. What does that mean? That means every principle, every law that you and I are accustomed to that is sound and just is being challenged. Every aspect of uh, normalcy is being challenged. If you deal with sexually, that means sexually is being challenged. Are you a male? Are you a female? That's why you will start seeing designations where they, they don't even, what you identify as, nothing. They're literally attempting, when I say they, I'm talking about Satan, who's working through people because he knows how to disrupt the earth. Satan knows how to get people destroyed. He's a liar. He steals. He steals, somebody say he steals. He steals. And he kills. And what else does he do? Destroy, Destroy right? The church, Jesus said, I've come that you may have life and having what? So we should have life, right? So postmodern, that means we're going to challenge everything. We're going to challenge everything. You, you mean to tell me the sky is blue, is it? 
They're going to challenge everything. They're going to challenge everything. Everything is up for grabs. Everything. And as a church, as church, the church by that large, that's why we're the salt of the earth. Because Satan knows if I can get intentional sins committed in any part of on the earth, I can cause the earth to vomit up as inhabitants. Simply meaning, evidently encoded in the DNA of the earth, if I use that term for the earth, is the disruption anytime there's unrighteous living for protracted periods of time, the earth has in itself to begin to vomit up the inhabitants. So you'll start seeing more earthquakes. You'll start seeing more storms. You'll start seeing devastation like you've never seen. You'll hear about tsunamis, and you're going to hear more of it. This is the part that you have to understand why it's important for us to be stable. Why it's important for us to have our rulers 12 inches. Because postmodern, we're going to say, no, it's two inches. Got it? And the house won't stand. And people are going to buy houses that's been built with two-inch rulers as if it's a foot. And those storms are going to come to us and them. And them meaning sinners. They're coming. Coming against families. Coming against our physical houses. Coming against our lives. The streams and the storms are coming and he told us they're going to come. But he said, if you build your house, you build your life on what I say, it's going to stand the test of the storms. Everybody got me? So postmodern also says, as I said, nothing is, no, no. It doesn't matter um, if the baby, if, if the baby a fetus, doesn't matter, it just depends on. When you, when you decide to have the abortion, so you have discussions like that, because nothing, everything up for grabs. I'm telling you, everything up for grabs, you can't really hardly tell anymore in terms of the clothes. It's all, you're going to see more neutral. Why? It's supposed to be like that in the world, but this corrupts in, in the church. And if the church becomes like the world, we can't change it. And woe be unto us because we will now partake in a lot of the destruction that's coming. Everybody got it? So everybody said it's good news. So that's post-modern era. Everybody got it? So blessed is the man. That means fully. Let's say if we, if we all agree, fully satisfied. Wouldn't you like to be fully satisfied? Anybody? What fully satisfied me? You ever had a good meal? And after you ate it, you left it alone, you didn't go back for the leftovers? Or some, for more, right? Because you ruined it. You thought ordering two hamburgers would do the trick when one did it, but you still had to get that second one, and you just lost the fully satisfied. Now you over satisfied. <laughs> and you got to untighten that belt, right? <laughs> Somebody say fully satisfied. fully satisfied. Can you imagine our Heavenly Father want us to live fully satisfied even in time when things are not going perfectly in every area of your life? You can still be fully satisfied. You can fully be satisfied why, why things are, are changing. Think about your life as a ship, not a boat. When you think and you understand your life as a, sh a ship, you understand when God starts to do something in your life, it's happening. So now you and I got to start rejoicing. We got to start acting as if he's doing it. Why? Because a ship takes longer to turn. The, the rudder could already be turned, but the ship is like this. When you're a baby Christian, you like a little speedboat. A lot of things turn around fast, right? You turn the rudder, the little boat turn. But now you got a life. And so now you have to now walk by faith in different areas of your life and have the patience where you can stay with God's word, keep confessing God's word, and see those things change in your family, change in your life, even though it looks like it's slow. But you got confidence because you can have confidence in God's word. I know it's changing. Everybody else can't see it. 
Like, it didn't change. It didn't move like this. But you got to not be moved by what you feel. I, man, I've been, I'm growing up in my faith muscles. How about you? Right? Because aren't we tempted to go by what we see? Amen. Right? I mean, that, that ship, your life has moved, but everybody else don't see it. You have to see it. You have to know, I know it's changing. I know it's over. I know with the truth of God's word, my life is changing. So that's my confession when sometimes it don't look like it has, but it's moving. It's moving. So now you start rejoicing. Abraham said he started rejoicing, giving glory to God, being fully persuaded that what God had promised, he's also able to perform. Right? That's why I say count it all what? Isn't, didn't we talk about that? Count it all what? Joy. Uh, Pastor T and I, it was something. I just said, we, let's start laughing about this. You got to start laughing because you got to get control of your soul in the midst of it's changing. It's already changing. Everything God has already let us know that God is a spirit. He's already know, and you're here, listen to this. You're going to start hearing a lot more about metaverse, metaphysics. I know I'm on the right track in here. See, I won't just teach you the Bible. I'll teach you what's happening. You're going to start hearing a whole lot of virtual stuff. You'll start hearing a lot of things where people are going to be virtual. So now man is really fascinated by things that are not just natural. So you'll start seeing your kids being indoctrinated and giving goggles where they're in a virtual space. And you'll start see seeing people. There are people that have been raped through a virtual experience. They are now seeing in the laws if you can now arrest people. So now they're getting so hooked on, and I, you don't know it because you don't see it. But in some of these places, this is a way of life. Churches are having metaverse. Yes, they are. Meaning, it's virtual. It's not real. They're selling cards, virtual cards, for thousands, millions of dollars. I had a guy, I was in a restaurant in Phoenix last week. Young man, just going crazy. He was, he was the waiter, just so excited to see me. And he said, have you, uh, are you making money off your, uh, what do you call that? The virtual picture. I said, what are you talking about? Yeah, that's what it is, NFTs, that's what it is, thank you. NFTs. So, so now, and he showed me. I said, what are you talking about? He says, I can go in here and, and, and the NFL, name, image, and likeness. They, they pay me for this too, by the way. <laughs> you literally can go into the virtual space and you can buy, like I do autograph sessions. People pay me $1,000 to sign my autograph. A, a real autograph. But now, now you can sell them in a virtual space. I'm like, who wants a virtual picture? But this people, I'm telling you, is getting ready to get off the chain. And if you're not aware, you, all of a sudden you're going to wake up and be thinking, man, what happened? Right? In other words, what happened? How did the world change? This stuff already happening. They're literally, as I said, people so addicted to this because they now know how to control the mind. So they can keep the goggles on a woman while she's looking at pornography. And now some groups who are taking advantage of this are go virtual and they can get women and young women to in tune and almost have sexual experiences in a metaverse. Pastor, why are you telling us all this? Because we're the only ones that have access to stability. I'm telling you this here, your grandkids, all this kind of stuff. You, you have to be careful. Uh, I know the young parents now, they allow the, the iPads and all the devices to entertain the children. And there are predators who are going after them. You have to, this, everybody that's listening, I need you to listen. Parents, you have to be vigilant. Grandparents have to be vigilant. But you got to be careful how you tell your children because they think they know everything. I'm talking about adult kids that have kids. So you can't approach it paranoid. 
You just got to talk and calm, just be alert. Okay, got it? Come on. Isn't that good news? It's not all the world is not coming to a handbasket, going to hell in a handbasket. It's not. It's really not. This is a great time to get people saved virtually. I will research to see how we can have uh, metaverse uh, services because that's where it's going. So we're going to get people saved in the metaverse. If you don't adop adopt, I, I should say if you don't adapt, <laughs> you're going to be like the dinosaurs. It's changing. Let's see. You cannot build a new house now without electric charger in it. You're going to wake up one day and all these cars are going to be electric. You're going to wake up one day if you live long enough and you're going to see the Jetsons. I'm telling you. I'm, you I'm, I'm telling you stuff here. So get ahead of it. Don't reject it. Start understanding. Grow as seniors. The dangerous thing is you get to believe in that you can't keep growing. You got to keep growing. You got to keep pressing. You got to learn new things and understand it. And don't put your mouth on it because you don't understand it. Everybody got me? That's the word of God. Somebody say the word of God. And you know the trip part is? The church, we knew about the metaverse long before all of this. That's what Jesus talked about. What was happening behind the scenes. What was going on? That's what he's telling you. Everything that's happening in the natural, the, the world just finding this out. Yeah. Everything that's happening in the natural, he told us here, is already being caused in the spirit realm. We know it. So now he'll start teaching how to rule in it. He'll start telling us stuff like, be careful. We're going to find out in James. Watch your mouth. Watch your tongue. Because it can cause activity in the metaverse. That's a modern way of saying it. It can cause activities in the spirit realm. That's right. This is not religion. He's just teaching us how you're to be victorious on the earth. That's why, and I've said this before, and I'll say it over and over again, i got to remind myself, everything in the earth has ears. How much? Everything. How can... How can you know without even knowing? I've said this before. Spell the word earth. What is it? Now, Adam and man names a lot of this stuff. And they intuitively know it because of God's spirit what it is. Why would you call it this thing we live on? What? Earth. Because... Everything. Your marriage has ears. Your single state has ears. Has everything here. Your hate has ears. And so does your love. Your money has ears. Everything in your house has ears. And the first person who's going to influence the earth. I should say the first person you're going to influence in the earth is yourself. Because you get to decide through your words what you're going to believe. Yes. Everything has what? Yes. So let's go drop down to verse 19. Wherefore, my beloved brothers, let every person, let every man, does that include females? Yes. Let how many? Every. How many last? Every. every, right? Let every man be swift to what? Swift to do what? Does that come natural? Does that come natural? So this is the one thing I want to hone in today. Let every man be swift to what? There, there's our word again. There's our word again. Let every man, every woman, 
Be swift to what? How many ears he gave us? How many miles? God implies so much. And guard your, no, go ahead, there you go. Guard your, there's our word again. There's our word again. Guard your heart for out of it is how you deal with the issues of life. Ear, what gets in your heart, is not necessarily through here. It's what you hear in, in here. That's why the lady with the issue of blood, she said, if I can only touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. It says she said that to herself. So the thing that's controlling your life and mine is our inner self-talk. Self-talk. You'd be surprised. I've been marking every place I saw where a person said within themselves. And what you say within yourself is you directing your life. You can be in a room with someone and say to yourself, she don't like me. And she can like you, and you're going to bring the dislike out of her. Because you said inside yourself, even though this person, God, put in your life to be an asset to you. But something in your past, your sensory picked up something that was negative, maybe about her earrings. And then your body took all that sensory information and brought you back to when you were 17 and a person had them earrings that was a mean teacher. And in the current moment, you 60 years old, and all that stuff has come back to you at one time. And it wasn't true at all. Come on, somebody say amen to this. Amen. All right. Wherefore, let my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to what? Yeah. Slow to what? Speed. Slow to what? Yeah. For the wrath of man work not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness, superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with what? Meekness. In order to receive with meekness, you got to be slow to what? Slow to speak. You got to be quick to what? Hear. Receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to do what? Save, Save your souls. Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your what? Yeah. Own selves. If any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he behold himself, so think of the word of God as your uh, spiritual what? Mirror. Mirror. The word of God is my spiritual what? The Bible is not a book you read. A Bible is a book that reads you. Amen. This Bible will tell you who you really are if you look in it. Because Satan lies as it relates to who we are. Everybody see that? So, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves. And I notice in the context of being doers of the word and not hearers only, this verse 22, if I go back up to verse 19, all this is in context. Wherefore, my beloved brothers, let every man be what? Swift to do what? Hear. Swift to do what? Hear. Now drop down to verse 20, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. But every person be swift to hear. When I start thinking about this, swift to hear what? I thought it was just practically like be swift to hear other people. That's what I thought. Like if I'm listening to Sister Rita, okay, I got to listen to her. I got to be swift to hear. I got to hear what she's saying. That's maybe the second part. What he's saying is let every person be swift to hear what God has to say. Let every person be swift to do what? Swift to do what? Let's see if I can build a case for this. Go to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 15. Deuteronomy 18, 15. Deuteronomy 18, 15. There we go. 
This is Moses talking about a prophet. He's talking about Jesus who is going to come. Going to come. Look, he says, the Lord, he's telling the children of Israel, and he's telling us, the Lord thy God will raise up unto you a prophet from the midst of you, of your brethren like unto me, unto him you shall do what? He's talking about Jesus. But you know the interesting thing in the Bible? It's almost like he's writing this for the current people he's talking to. But he's not. He's writing about Jesus thousands of years later. But the most important thing he's telling you in here, God is going to raise up a prophet. Look what he said. The Lord thy God, think of the Father God, will raise up unto thee a what? A prophet. The Father is going to raise up unto thee a prophet. But it looks like when you read it, he's talking about the current generation he's talking to. But he's not. He's talking to those of us who are going to meet this prophet. From the midst of thee, of thy brethren, that's why Jesus was Jewish or Hebrew. He would have been Hebrew back then, Old Testament. Like unto me, unto him shall you do what? Can't hear you. Let every person be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to get angry. He's going to raise up a prophet like me. You are to do what? What's the most important word? What am I supposed to be doing? All right, a prophet is coming. All right, good. Hallelujah. But what's my action item? You need to hear him. You need to hear him. Because he's getting ready to come with truth. Because society and Satan are lies. He's getting ready to lie to people. He's getting ready to mess up the whole thing. He said he's going to try to shake the foundations of the earth, which is the family. Say so he's going to try to attack the families. And the first thing he wants to do is divide husband and wife. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you that's the first thing he wants to do. He got Eve to have a conversation with her, and Adam didn't step up. He said... Like unto me, unto him you shall do what? Hearken. Come on, come on, come on, guys. It's that same word. We back here. Here. He's talking about Jesus. So who should we be listening to? Jesus, that prophet. Next verse. According to all that you desired of the Lord your God in Horeb. Go over to uh, verse, jump over to verse uh, 19. And it shall come to pass, are y'all listening to this? And it shall come to pass, whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of you. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, the Father is saying, I am going to, he's saying through Moses, this prophet going to be different. He'll be like me, but he'll be more powerful. You're going to have to listen to this dude. Go to uh, Matthew. Go, go to Acts chapter 3, verse 22. Acts chapter 3, verse 22. Acts chapter 3, verse 22. Everybody say, I need to hear. I need to hear. Now, here's the only definition that you need to understand about hearing. In the Hebrew context, if you don't do what you hear, you didn't hear it. <laughs> that's how the Hebrew people in their language saw hearing. Hearing something and obeying that something was synonymous. That's why he says, don't be hearers only and not doers. For Moses truly said unto our fathers, they're now hearkening back this New Testament. They're quoting what Moses said, what we just read. For Moses truly said unto our fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brothers like unto me. This New Testament under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is now connected with Moses said what we just read, Deuteronomy. He's connecting it to the church. Like unto me, him shall you what? Here, there's our word again. Him shall you... In, in our context, hearing means to what? 
Obey. If you didn't obey, you didn't hear. Well, I heard that. No, you didn't. And Satan wanted to deceive us into thinking we heard because we got it up here. Like unto him shall you hear in all things whatsoever he shall say, what? Unto you. Whatever he shall say unto you, verse 23, next verse. And it shall come to pass, are you listening? That every, a few, every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Now, what prophet are we talking about now? And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Did y'all see that? Every prophet which shall, which will not, there's our word, Obey, hear, and what? Obey, that prophet shall be destroyed from how? From among the people. So let's see how this destroying take place. Let's go back to up. Go to verse number 13 in James chapter 1. I'm sorry, James chapter 1, verse 13. Let's bring this home. Let's have some fun with this. So now we got to hear what Jesus has to say. We're, I want to hear what Jesus has to say. Let me go to another one because I need to build something up real quick. Matthew chapter 17, verse 5. Matthew chapter 17, verse 5. While Jesus spake, while Jesus was teaching, while Jesus was talking, behold, a a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice of the cloud which said, let's all read this, this is my beloved son in whom I am do what? It sounds like a common thing. Now, who's talking in this verse? God the Father. Now, don't y'all think the creator of all things, if he tells us who would be a good person to listen to, don't y'all think we need to be listening to him? Now, the one who owns, he's the supreme. Right? He's the supreme. Lies. He's the supreme. He knows how we made. He knows the devil. He knows everything. And he says, out of all the people on the earth, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Do what? Hear ye him. Anybody see a common theme here? Anybody see a common theme? So if I were to come and try to attack the church, I want the church to discredit and ignore the word of God. Because if I can get the church to discredit, ignore the word of God, I can steal the authority that they have to rule this earth. I can steal their ability to stop the division and bring unity in politicians. I can get them to put unjust judges in place and the church don't do nothing. If I can just get them to ignore the word. If I can just get them to listen to all Tom, Dicks, and Harrys and Susies but not Jesus. If I can get them to look, listen to, get Oprah, Snoop Dogg. Yeah. You'd be surprised how many people quoting everybody else but don't know what Jesus said. I figure if the Father who owns everything, made everything, knows everything, can put a person in hell or heaven, tells you who to listen to. Shouldn't we be listening to him? Let's check out my man Jesus. Go to um, Matthew chapter 3. No, I had another one. No, I had one more. Yeah, that's it. Go to Luke chapter 11, verse 28. Luke chapter 11, verse 28. You know, a lot of people, including the Catholic Church, try to rev up and make Mary great. Right? Yeah. yeah, anybody know that came? No, mm-hmm. Right? They, I mean, make Mary, that we got the, the rosary, all that kind of stuff, right? 
And that's what they, this lady did with Jesus. She was watching Jesus, and then here we go. Go back to verse 27. I'm sorry. There we go. And it came to pass as he spake these things, a certain woman came of the company, lifted up her voice and said unto Jesus, Blessed is the womb. She talking about Mary. Blessed is the womb that bare thee and the paps which you sucked. Talking about his mother Mary and her breast. That's what they're saying. They're now trying to infer something on Mary. But let's see who the son, what, what, what's the son's response? Because the father told us, listen to the son, mm -hmm. not listen to this lady. Everybody got me? Because yeah. this lady wanted to talk about Mary. Oh, and, oh Mary. They're they ready to bow down to Mary like Jesus. And so listen to the son, what's his viewpoint? Because now you got uh, just a general lady. She's in a company. She's seeing this magnificent things, the anointing on this man, on Jesus' life. He's a prophet. She gets so excited, she talks about his mother and not him. Let's see his response. Verse 28, please. But he said, now if Jesus talking, don't you think we need to be listening? Yes. Let's see what he says. Yes, rather. Blessed are they, there's a common theme, that hear the word of God and keep it. That's a common theme. That's a common theme. I think I want to say this so much over and over again. If you open your refrigerator, you'll be hearing, hear and obey. Remember last week we talked about Saul? And Saul got the word, was told what to do, right? Then he gave credit to the people, and then he ends up losing his job because he didn't hear and do what? Obey. And God has no respect to person. 